but uh, the sun always rises here. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to get everybody to appear in the in the National Assembly, but I, some of them are running away to Pretoria. Problem. <laughs> <laughs> Honourable Minister, some of them are in the basement. <laughs> what are they doing in the basement? Well, I don't know. Uh, it looks like, looks like there is a war somewhere. So <laughs> when there is a war, people go in the basement. Chair, uh, Chair this, this meeting is live, so yeah. I think we yes, need to... Yes, we're going to start immediately. Thank you. Uh, uh, Chair, uh, the, the head of secretariat will be... Uh, requesting link. It looks like he didn't receive the link. We'll be requesting the link and joining us. Thank, thank you very much, Honourable Minister. Yes. Honourable Member, we are about to start our meeting. Uh, welcome to the Portfolio Committee and Police. Uh, Honourable Minister, you are welcome with your team. Um, Honourable Whitfield has sent an apology to say that he has problems with his bandwidth issues. So. He'll be joining us uh, through audio, but his video is not um, working. Honourable members, this meeting is live streamed, so could you ensure that when you do speak, that um, your video camera is on? Um, in the meantime, could I request honourable members that we do deal with the um, appointment or non-appointment of the iPad executive director and that we then um, manage the um, the adoption of the reports of we have dealt with the iPad head. Uh, the minister has um, left a prior meeting at uh, uh, and that's that's important and has joined us and we respect the fact that he has joined us because we would not have been able to address this matter without the minister. Uh, but the minister is expected at the union buildings at 11. So I, I would like us to continue with uh, uh, or start with um, the appointment of the IPT. We do have a quorum. Good morning and welcome, honourable members. Um, honourable members, do you agree that I do start with the appointment of the IPT? Yes, Chairperson. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. I do not have any further introductions. Uh, you are welcome to introduce the matter. Thank you, Minister. Thank you very much, Chairperson. I hope I'm um, uh, well audible. Yes, Chairperson. Minister. No, no thanks. Uh, Chairperson, the <coughs> process of this appointment has been quite tedious and uh, and long. Uh, we we have tried uh, to firstly uh, fall within the uh, 12 months as prescribed by the by the law. Uh, it couldn't happen. We <clears throat> had serious attempts to deal with the matter. Uh, we would have. Uh, started by uh, advertising uh, well within the period, though I would not remember exact dates, uh, within the period. And uh, as we look at the quality of people that have, uh, have apl applied, we, we couldn't find that we can find the, 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 the candidate to fill this position. Uh, we had a second bite <clears throat> on the adverts, and uh, on that one, uh, we shortlisted and uh, we we interviewed, and we couldn't find uh, the candidate. Uh, that, that that was still within the period, but towards the end of the period, uh, that interview uh, was done by the minister Stellandabeni Abrahams. Uh, Minister Lamola, uh, Deputy Minister uh, Matale, and the head of the Secretariat, Mr. Rapia. And on that one, 
we did interview, we shot, we shortlisted interview, we couldn't find uh, the, we couldn't find the candidate. Because at, at, at that time, it was at the tail end of the 12th prescribed month, we wrote the, the letter to the speaker requesting that uh, we, we got an uh, ex extension, but also because we have tried, uh, I think twice, we went to the, we went to the process of head hunting, uh, which is allowed, but also which has its own processes. Uh, the 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 process of the of head hunting. So the secretariat uh, moved on, and we found the company called Ultimate Recruit Solutions (URS) that was going to find uh, the candidates uh, at the way of at the way of head hunting. Uh, that process continued after we have requested the extension on the office of the speaker, uh, which was the letter written on April 2020 uh, uh, in the office of the speaker. So the process started, uh, and then uh, I think I have a, a, a document here, which I think everybody has it, uh, the document that uh, the 24 people were approached or were invited by the URS, the Ultimate Recruit Solution, uh, to to be part of the of the head hunting. And uh, indeed, uh, that was uh, shortlisted by by themselves, and uh, we found five candidates out of those candidates, which happened to be Mr. Solomon Myler, Mr. Kony, Ms. Kony Moize, Mr. Manye Morocco, Ms. Jennifer Tansing, and Dr. Mike, uh, Dr. Mike uh, Masipiato. And they, they handed those uh, to us, and we invited the head uh, of this recruitment company to come and make the presentation on these five names that they have shortlisted. Uh, the same team that had shortlisted and did not find the, ca the candidate before uh, of uh, Minister Lamola, Minister Ndabeni, <coughs> Deputy Minister Matale, Rabia and Zele, uh, they sat down to shortlist again. Uh, we shortlisted three this time and the people that we shortlisted was Ms. Jennifer Tlansing, Mr. Solomon Maile, and Dr. Mike Masiapo. And we checked their qualifications, we checked their CV, uh, but remember, as we checked them, they've been already checked by this uh, independent company. That's why they were regarded as, the, as people that could have been shortlisted. And we were also satisfied uh, uh, ourselves with that, uh, that the, the, the listed uh, people, they're supposed to have the NQ7 and more, and more than that if they could. And indeed, after shortlisting, uh, they, were, they, were, they were interviewed. Uh, uh, and then we had the criteria of, in, in the, the criteria of interviewing them was, Candidates were given a technical exercise to prepare for the hour and present, present it to, to the panel, outlining the challenges that IPID faced and the strategy to deal with such challenges and how they would implement the strategy. They were also required to outline the financial constraints in the country and how they would ensure service delivery amidst of the constraint as well as how they would effectively deal with low morale of employees while also ensuring improved performance and achieving all targets. B, a candidate who demonstrate an in-depth knowledge of the criminal justice system, 
the legislative framework and the public service policy on the relationship to the IPC, a candidate who would efficiently and effectively ensure the management of the investigation and complaints and the impact of the police service conducts. D, a candidate who understands the work of IPC and can identify a work with the key strategic stakeholders, clearly outlining the role and the roles and responsibilities as well as the impact of the participation. E, a candidate who has special, specific and unique qualities over others in terms of the post of executive director of the IPAD and the distinctive role that she or he will, will play um, will play that will make a difference. On the, oh, number nine, on the three candidates who were interviewed, Miss Jennifer Tikele uh, Titlaseng was unanimously nominated by the panel as the best candidate whose name should be submitted to the parliament for consideration. Below is a summary of the nominated candidates and, uh, and uh, the, career, uh, the CV uh, are, are attached of those. It, it's after that, so I, I think the document is in the hands uh, of the members that will be explaining and how we finally, as I'm saying, unanimously, almost every member of the panel agreed that Ms. Chansen was the best candidate. It was on that score after we have agreed, wrote the, 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 we submitted the name, wrote the letter, to the Speaker of Parliament and submitting these processes and the name that has been uh, nominated uh, to the to this Speaker so that the Speaker can take the processes forward. And in the end, again, we have the we have the CV, full CV of uh, of Miss uh, Jennifer Tikeliti in Tlaseng. Uh, we we have the. Uh, the, the verification of, of, the, of the qualifications in the hand, which have been verified uh, to be correct. So up to this point, that is, a, that, is a, that is a process that we have followed. And uh, we have sent the fingerprints of everybody to the criminal record so that we, we, we find out if these people don't have, uh, we have not, uh, received the response whether they are or not. We should be the preliminary research before uh, we will then find the final vetting of the candidate. There where we are, uh, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, with this process and the presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Members, and thank you very much, Honorable Minister. The Deputy Minister has also joined us. Welcome, Deputy Minister. Uh, welcome, Dr. Kunaval. Honorable Members, um, just to, to give you the background, we sent you a well in advance, a research paper highlighting and providing us with a chronological sequence of events. We looked at um, the events as it pertained to the previous IPADED, the legal judgments when it's related or pertain to the McBride matter. We looked at the act as it prescribes the appointment of the IPAD head. The IPAD head states, um, the IPAD Act categorically states that an IPAD head must be appointed within one year of the, um, the, uh, um, Term or, or the end of the contract of the previous incumbent. The minister must nominate a suitably qualified candidate. This is section uh, six, the appointment of an executive director. And um, this must be presented to the speaker. The minister presented all the documents of um, this appointment to, to the speaker. Uh, it was very transparent, all the documents, the shortlisting, the candidates, the CVs of the candidates, um, and that was presented to the speaker. We have 30 days within which, 30 working, parliamentary working days 
from the time of nomination in terms of subsection one to confirm or reject the nomination. However, the Act says that in case of a vacancy, the minister must fill the vacancy within a reasonable period of time, which period must not exceed one year. Honourable members, we have exceeded the period of one year, and that creates a conundrum, and I think um, we have to deal with that before we continue the debate of the appointment of the IFAD leader. Honourable Whitfield has indicated that he would like to ask a question to the minister, but once I have put the matter into context, I'll allow all the, minister, the members to ask questions because this is quite a serious matter and we have to exercise our oversight responsibility in this. Honourable members, when the Act said that it, it, it categorically stated that it had to appoint an IPT head within the period of one year. We were unable to do that and um, a vacuum will arose. Because of this vacuum, we either had to leave the, the, the iPad head, um, the iPad without a head, or we have to allow um, an acting head to continue. So we were doomed if we appointed and we extended the acting head because we could not appoint in time. And we were doomed if we did not continue with an acting head because IPAD could not function without a head. The Act does not prescribe what happens if a head is not appointed in time or within the stipulated period. So this vacuum was then it created this conundrum and um, I think we, we have to address this. The minister wrote to the speaker indicating that they had interviewed and they had not found a suitable candidate. The speaker indicated that, yes, the act said we had to appoint within a year, but failure of which she, she then referred the matter to the committee, the Portfolio Committee on Police. The Portfolio Committee on Police deliberated on the matter and I will I gave you the exact dates when the Deputy Minister came, when the Minister came. So there definitely was a willingness on the side of the Minister to appoint. However, that willingness did not produce a result. And because there was this vacuum, we had to appoint an acting head. The law did not tell us what to do. The law said we had to appoint within a year. But the situation which we found ourselves in compelled us to have an acting head and we could not do it. When we look at the, um, the COSA matter or the COSA judgment as we would refer to it, on the 15th of May, the High Court of South Africa, the Gauteng Division, Judge Fabricius on the Causa matter noted the inadequacy of existing investigative mechanisms in IPAD. The judge continues and he noted that it was a serious concern that IPAD at present, in his words, does not even have a permanent executive director for the duration of the lockdown who could act independently as was required by the court in the McBride versus the minister matter. Now, the Constitutional Court found that certain provisions in the IPAD Act were unconstitutional. The amendment of the IPAD Act was there to allow for the firing of the IPAD Act, and that amendment was ascended to by the president. Judge Fabrice states that the court order ordered Parliament to cure the defects in legislation within 24 months. Now, since then, um, about 44 months later, Parliament has still not amended 
the IPAD Act. We have had this debate in the committee and we had a commitment from the minister that there would be an amendment, a full scale amendment to the IPAD Act. Um, the IPAD Act this time cannot just be amended for the appointment of the executive director because the IPAD Act does not cover the functioning of the Metro Police, the city police or traffic officials or traffic departments. We saw this in the incidents in the city of Cape Town where unfortunately a man who was naked was dragged out of his, his informal settlement and um, the committee has requested that the city of Cape Town um, and the province does report to us on this matter. So if we want to wait and Honorable Whitfield suggested that we wait until the IPAD Act is completely amended before we appoint the executive director of IPAD. So I would like honorable members to dis discuss and debate the matter whether IPAD should remain without firstly a permanent head until the act is amended. It could take us more than a year to amend, totally amend the IPAD Act. If we wait until the amendment of the IPAD Act, IPAD will be without a head because legally we would not be able to extend the acting person's period or term of office. We have this um, difficulty that if we do not appoint the IPAD head, we fall outside of the law. If we do appoint the IPAD head, could this be legal and we We've sought legal advice on all matters. There isn't a single legal argument or advice which tells us what to do if we fail to appoint within one year. The matter has been sent to the Portfolio Committee, it's referred to the Portfolio Committee, and the Portfolio Committee is then requested to resolve this matter. The argument further is that during this period of COVID-19, with all the cases that we have referred to IPAD, it is impossible and it would really be, um, it, it would be irresponsible of the committee not to have an IPAD head whilst we are having so many cases referred to IPAD. Um, honorable members, I'm not a lawyer. That is not my a legal assessment. That is just based on the documents which we have, we have perused those documents. We received uh, documents from the Helen Sussman Foundation. We received letters from Honorable Whitfield. We have received letters from Corruption Watch and a number of other institutions which we have considered. I'll now allow members to indicate um, the, the, um, their readiness to speak, to contribute or ask the minister questions. I have Honorable Whitfield as the, the first speaker. Honorable Whitfield, and then I'll take more. Um, before you speak, Honorable Whitfield, I'll take more hands. Honorable Whitfield is, is on audio. Honorable members, you have an opportunity to raise your hands. Sir Blanche. Um, could you do so in, uh, so that we can see? Shaky mom. And Grunewald, uh, uh, Chair. Yes. Shaky mom. Yes, I have. Mufuken, Chair. Yes. Majosi. Mufuken. Sir Blanche. Shambani. Who have you? Honorable Majosi. Yes, I do have Majosi on Shambani. You have Grunewald, uh, Chair. Yes, you are third. Honourable members, I'll start with Whitfield. Um, I do have Papazzo. Um, Your name will uh, appear on my screen as well. Honourable members, I'll start with the rest. Could you just indicate on the screen if um, you would like to continue speaking? I'll start with Honourable Whitfield, the Blanche, and then Shaky Mum in that order. Honourable Whitfield? 
Thank you very much, Chairperson, and um, thank you to the Minister for his presentation. Uh, Chairperson, I'm extremely disappointed that the Minister was allowed to proceed with his presentation, given the overwhelming information uh, uh, that um, the process appears to be flawed. And I say that, I've set it out in my letter to the committee, we've debated this, it has been repeatedly raised by myself and many colleagues on the committee, that there are concerns. And I would like to direct your attention, Chairperson, um, to the legal opinion which was solicited by yourself uh, and was sent to the committee on the 11th of June, where it actually says that uh, the section does not clothe Parliament with the power to extend the period. Now, Chairperson, this committee has extended, er erroneously in my view, uh, the provision for the minister to appoint and nominate an IPAD head twice. The first time it was extended, I cautioned against it, and we were told that we would be provided with comprehensive information by the Deputy Minister regarding the process, the selection process, which was conducted earlier this year. We never received that information, and therefore the committee could not conduct its oversight responsibility, nor could it hold the executive to the account to account. We now have the minister presenting uh, a timeline of failure to nominate, a timeline of complete and utter failure and disregard for the law, where there is no provision for this committee to extend the nomination. We are now putting the committee in a very precarious situation, Chairperson, and uh, I note that you say we have failed, uh, the minister has failed. It was the minister's job to bring a nominee to this committee uh, before 12 months was up. He had 12 months to nominate somebody and to run a process, and the executive has failed. This committee cannot simply rubber stamp the minister's nominee without considering the very serious legal implications. And that's where I want to thank you, Chair, especially for including the letter from the speaker, because it appears in the minister's remarks that he's under the impression that he was granted an extension by the speaker. And that's simply not true. The speaker says that she may not, that the wording of this particular provision of legislation in section 6.5 of the IPAD Act is very specific and does not allow for any extension to be granted even by parliament. This committee is parliament, Chairperson. We are members of parliament. We may not extend the period for the minister to nominate. Chairperson, I have made it repeatedly clear on a number of occasions and I'm really sorry that this committee now finds itself in a situation where it must make a decision which appears to have already been made and I can tell you now chairperson that this committee is being placed in a, a really difficult position legally uh, and I do not believe that we have the authority whether you want to or not whether we, we do not have the authority to proceed with the appointment of the minister's nominee the process is fatally flawed and will be challenged. We've seen that in the letters from Corruption Watch. We've seen Helen Swisman Foundation's letters. We need to be very cautious here, Chairperson, to protect the committee and parliament and to ensure that we amend the act in order to deal with these inconsistencies so that we can make sure that the appointment is beyond reproach. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Honorable Whitfield. Um, the next speaker is Honorable De Blanche and then Honorable Groenewald. Chairperson, thank you. Um, I am echoing what my colleague said. Uh, he covered me well. And I just want to emphasize also from my side that, uh, you know, the minister failed dismally so. And, you know, we raised this on numerous occasions. And, you know, yet they told us in the previous meeting that they cannot run a process again, you know, advertising stuff like that. And, you know, the service provider that they appointed did exactly that. Also, uh, you know, advertise, blah, blah, blah. But I don't want to discuss it now. The, the process is flawed, Chairperson. We need to deal with the legal issues and we can obviously not continue with the appointment of the minister's nominee. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Thank you, Chair. Chair, we 
are here in a situation of a catch-22 situation, if I can use that phrase. Now, firstly, I want to say that I would have thought that at least we would have also received a legal opinion from Parliament on the Alan Sussman case, where they are taking the matter on appeal. I have my own opinion on that, but that is not uh, what it is about now. I would have liked to have a legal opinion from Parliament to state to us what our position as Portfolio Committee is, seeing that there is an appeal uh, from the Alan Sussman Foundation. It makes it a bit different in the sense that there was an agreement between the Honourable Minister and McBride that was made a order of the court. So that is one matter. The fact of the matter is also that, uh, as the other uh, honorable members have mentioned, we are already out of our time frames. And then the question is, if we are out of our time frames, do we still have to ensure that we do an appointment immediately because we are already out of the time frames? Or should we ensure that there is a more thorough process? As far as I'm concerned, uh, we as a committee can make decisions to say what we want to discuss before we make a recommendation on a nominee. I don't necessarily see that we will have to amend the Act immediately to determine our internal process here in the committee to ensure that there is, uh, for instance, uh, that the criteria that we as a committee want to use to make an uh, appointment. You will remember last year, we were confronted with only one name. I said in the committee, that's not acceptable. Uh, we said that we want more names. Yes, I saw the letter of, from the minister and what the minister has said. But the fact of the matter is that we as a committee, we have to make a recommendation. And we as a committee can say, listen, if we want to make a recommendation on the name submitted, we are going to follow the following process. My question is, I think that, or let me say that, and that we should also uh, have clarity from the legal advisors. I don't necessarily see that if the committee in itself determine a specific criteria, which the committee wants to follow, that we will have to wait for an amendment of the Act. Yes, we can still continue with the amendment of the Act to ensure that in future we have a proper process. But two things then, Chairperson, uh, as a summary. Firstly, I would like to have a legal opinion on the Helen Sussman Foundation's appeal. Secondly, I'd also like to have a legal opinion from the Parliament uh, legal advisors whether we as a committee, and I have, we can determine our own criteria which we want to follow, of course, within the parameters of the legislation. And if we can do it, I would suggest that we as a committee compile our criteria and uh, that we can go forward uh, on that basis. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Honorable Dr. Grunewald. I'm concerned because we did request a, um, a legal opinion on the Ellen Sussman matter. Um, could I then, because it seems as if members did not receive it, uh, there is an, uh, uh, um, uh, a legal opinion. So um, could I request that the admin, the our, um, our secretariat, 
that you do um, find the, the legal opinion and that if possible, you do put it on the screen. Um, could you indicate in the meeting chat if you do have that legal opinion? Dr. Grunewald, there is a legal opinion. I requested thank, one. Thank you, Chair, but I didn't receive, I, I received the legal opinion uh, on what the situation is with uh, the minister's position and whether we can extend the period or the time within which an appointment should be done. But I didn't receive any legal opinion on what the Alan Sussman situation is. My, my apologies if you have not received it. That is why I'm saying it's too late for us to send it now. Could we agree that it be put up on the screen once I've taken um, the inputs from the other members? So after I've listened to Mapatswe, could we have that legal opinion um, uh, put up on the screen for us, please? Uh, Honorable Sheikh, you may continue, Sheikh Ima. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair, and thank you to the Minister for his presentation. I think, Chair, what we must be very mindful of the fact is that we do not have an iPad head at the moment. IPUT is functioning without the without a head, and we know the consequences of that. We know the problems that we are experiencing. It is very clear that court, in terms of the judgment, has asked us to go and amend the act. We have not been able to do it timelessly, and we are still busy with it. And it is very clear, Chair, that this is going to take a period of time before we are able to actually go and amend the act. So the question that arises is, and you know, Chair, Sometimes I feel that the court want to run parliament, uh, 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 and I have a problem with that. Now, while they talk about the amendment and they tell us that we have to do these things, remember that even if you look at the act, the act is not clear what happens if the minister does not appoint. Now, in the absence of that, should parliament not be able to exercise its right to do what is in the best interest of serving the people in the country? And one of the things should be that we should look at whether we should, in the meantime, appoint a head while we are busy in the process of trying to amend that act so that we will correct it in the court. But if we do not do that and we don't know how long that process is going to take to go and amend the act, it means IPUD will continue to function without a head and it means it is not good basically for the various and large amounts of complaints that are coming and that is why you see iPad is not functioning optimally. So I think you know we need to be mindful of that what is in the best interest mm -hmm. and what is the intent or purpose of having a head in terms of iPad. I don't want to go into the issues of the nominees and things because I think right now we are dis discussing the issue of whether we believe we have the right to go ahead and not. Now, I know there's legal opinions, and I am sitting here with the Helen Sussman Foundation legal uh, opinion here as well, Chair. But what it does not take into consideration, what must you do in the interim while you are waiting to process and amend the act? They're not telling you that. And I think that, that is where Parliament comes in. And, and I think it's a matter that we need to discuss extensively where we, sh we should look into whether we can appoint somebody and accelerate this process of amending the act, and then we know the processes that will be followed will be different. I think I'm, 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 I'm actually going to stop there by saying that we must be mindful of the various reasons, the issue of, of, of the bride matter, we must be aware of the fact and mindful of the fact that, uh, uh, as the minister says, they were not able to get suitable nominees, but it's clear that the act does not tell you what happens if the minister fails and does not give direction to parliament too. So there's a gray area then based on that, I believe we must do what is in the best interest and the intent of why we want an iPad head so that this structure can operate uh, satisfactorily or optimally. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Honorable Sheikh Iman. Honorable Mofuke. Uh, thank you, Chairperson, and thanks uh, for the Minister's presentation. Uh, it's long overdue. Chair, I agree with uh, the Honourable Sheikh Imam, especially when it comes to the amendment of the IPIT. That is a process, and we must allow it to go through as a, at a time when we are supposed to do that. 
The second part is that uh, it doesn't actually, it's, there's a lot of gray areas in it, and it doesn't say much about what the minister will do if then we cannot appoint somebody. We must agree that the IP has been in, having a number of challenges, and uh, having those many challenges, we went through as a committee to make sure that uh, there's a research into this matter, starting from where McBride until to the end. Now that we have come to the end, I, for one, am impressed and I'm happy that uh, for the first time, IPIT will have a woman who's having 20, over 20 years of experience in the Houting community safety, a person who's got a degree in law, and I'm asking myself, what is it that now we want? Because this is the person we are looking for, and it will be for the first time that IPIT is going to have a woman. And it will be for the first time that, uh, you know, we need to look at what happened before and where we are now and look at the process of going forward. What worries me is that uh, it looks like uh, there are people that are spokesperson for corruption, Wash and Helen Tuzman in the committee, and I have a problem. I have, very, I have a serious problem about that. What I'm going to agree with uh, uh, Honorable Sheikh Kamam is that uh, we should allow the last part, actually is yourself, Chairperson, that we must look at the Helen Sussman legal opinion. Some of us have seen it, but uh, we should also make sure that uh, we allow our legal person from parliament to speak because he's here. We are not talking about somebody who's not there so that we can be able to go forward. I can tell you on the side of the ANC, we support the name of uh, Jennifer Dikeledi to be the IP head. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Honorable Mokoking. Honorable Majosi. Uh, thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Good morning to uh, the Minister, the Deputy Minister, and uh, Honorable Members. Um, I think, Chairperson, on this one, we must not think maybe of the administration and maybe of uh, the portfolio, but uh, uh, prioritize the survival of uh, IPID. Uh, I have seen these uh, legal advices, but at the same time, they are not um, stating exactly what is unlawful in the appointments and so forth. So then it puts you in that uh, uh, process. If, if they were stating that, the process that has been under uh, gone by the, the the minister is unlawful. Then would then be, be able to have a a, a, a clear a, a conclusion on what is it that we want to do. But it is not clear on 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 the things that should be done. Nonetheless, uh, we can't afford chairperson that uh, IP will suffer not having a head already ip is is, is is suffering with uh, with with uh, the with having the acting executive so we need we we really really need to make that decision and i like your conclusion chairperson that we do have options it's not like we don't have options as the committee and um, the minister presented the the process of which uh, it has been low overdue, uh, but nonetheless, um, let us just uh, see the process uh, process uh, unfolding. And uh, if um, the the current nomination of um, the the nominated person is the one, then I don't see us um, uh, having to argue about it unless there are other things that we are not told of. Uh, but I would, I would support that. Let us have um, a, a, an appointment of the executive on IPID so that then we now know who is reliable and responsible for any actions or anything that will be happening on the IPID. So I think we must give that process a chance and see how it unfolds and uh, we'll take it from there as the portfolio committee. I, I concur 
with uh, Honorable Mufukeng that um, if this, uh, the candidate is qualified and has experience, then what is holding us back? Who, who exactly do we want? Because if maybe there were specifics of uh, candidates that we would have gladly wanted to, 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 to be nominated as the preference, then we, we should have done that as the committee. But we do not have. Let us just wait for the process to unfold and the appointment goes on. Because if we we wait for the act to be amended, then uh, another year is going to be the same thing that is going on in the iPad, that it will also suffer without having a head on the executive. So I, I, I strongly uh, uh, suggest that we, we continue with the process. And even though uh, it was supposed to be done a long time ago, uh, but let us do it now so that we don't then fall back and saying the portfolio committee has not done its job in terms of uh, making sure that the entities that report to to them are fully, fully uh, um, incorporated with the executives. Thanks, Chair. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Majosi. Uh, Honorable Shinbeni. Uh, thank you. Chairperson, uh, thank you. Greetings to the minister, deputy minister, and honorable members. Uh, I'm nearly covered by all the honorable members who had already spoken, but I'm looking at the position of the committee itself, because now here we've got the law that does not say anything about uh, the appointment of the executive director after the period has lapsed. Because the 12 months has lapsed, but it does not talk about extension. It does, it does not talk about anything, whether is there any wrongdoing when the, uh, the period has been extended or whatever. Now, I think, yeah, I'm just afraid that the committee we might find ourselves uh, in the crossfire here between, uh, 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 so as to say, these uh, Helen Susman foundations and at the same time the law on the other side, because I did not hear also when the minister has written to the speaker what was uh, the response on the extension. I hear that the letter was written to the speaker about the extension, but I did not hear the response whether it was to say they can get the extension or it must be decided in the committee. But now we can see that we as the committee, I think we might find ourselves now in the wrong position as to say that we've extended and we don't have uh, the guards or that law that gives us the right to extend the the so-called the the extension of uh, the period of the appointment of the the IP8. Now that is the problem. That is my position. I, I'm thinking that the acceleration also of the amendment act uh, of the IP that can help us, and the acceleration also of the my bright issue, so that we are always on the clear because now as I'm saying, that we might find ourselves in the crossfire. There is this much pride issue. There is this amendment of the IP Act. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you, Honorable Shembeni. Honorable Mapatswe and then Advocate Njikela, could you, after Honorable Mapatswe, assist us with the legal opinion on the Ellen Sussman Foundation? Honorable Mapatswe? Uh, thank you, Honorable Chairperson, and uh, thanks for the presentation uh, by the Minister. It has been long that we have been waiting for this uh, to come to the committee. But if you remember, Honorable Members, that time and again, 
we are the ones who have been fighting for the appointment of a permanent executive director of IPIT. And Deputy Minister, whenever he was present in our portfolio committees, he would give us an update, including the minister, that uh, from their side, they are trying their level best to get a suitable candidate to occupy the position of an executive uh, director. And indeed, they have communicated with the, the speaker. The speaker responded uh, to, to, the, to the letter from the, the minister. But my problem is that what Honorable White, Whitfield is saying here is mainly concentrating on the amendment of the Act which I think the department is in the process of uh, doing that. And I don't think we can wait for the amendment of the Act to appoint an IPIT. That means we'll have another year without an IPIT head. So it can be a, a correct, a honorable members. And I want to repeat the words from uh, honorable Mufuke. We are honorable members here of the Portfolio Committee on Police. We are not representing the Helen Sussman uh, Foundation. You may refer to it if you want uh, to talk about something. But I think it's a matter between the department and uh, the Helen Sussman. And the Helen Sussman issue, it's an issue about the renewal of the contract of uh, uh, McBride. McBride term of office expired. So the minister did not renew it. So if your term has expired, it's a prerogative of the minister uh, whether he or she extends or does not uh, extend that. So he did not extend and he informed that. So that is why the Helen Sussman is taking the issue to court. It's about the, re, the, the renewal. It doesn't talk about uh, the appointment. The appointment is using it as a blackmail that if you appoint before we finalize the issue of uh, the renewal, which for me, I'm not a legal person, but I don't see whether it will make any change whether we, uh, we have appointed or not. It deals about the renewal, and the minister was very clear that no, I'm not going to renew, I'm not renewing. And for me, it's very new that if your contract, you sign a contract, it's for five years. And for five years, your contract expires, and I say I don't renew it. Now you go to court to force the court to re to, to, to renew your contract. It does not work like that. It's wrong for the Heron Susan Foundation to do that. Then let's go to the issue of the legal advice. The act, I want to agree with most of the honorable members. The act is very clear on section six, uh, subsection five, uh, which it says, uh, it is silent on what must happen in the event that the minister fails to fill the vacancy within the prescribed period. So it's silent. So the minister must also be silent. So all of us must be silent. Then the IP does not have the head. 
work must be done. So it is the duty of the, if there are people who want to, uh, to go to court, to go and argue that, that thing. But the amendment of the act, it does not speak only about the, the IPT head. It's broad, it speaks about many things. And I'm very worried that if we don't rush these things, we will see things that happened in Western Cape, where the Metro Police, you know, they undermine our people. They evict a person. Even when the regulations have been very clear that no evictions during this COVID time. But the Western Cape, because it is a federal state, it is on its own, it can do as it wishes. It even undermines the person who, who, who is inside. You know, just that dignity of our people. It shows that they don't respect that dignity of our people. That is why they are fighting very strong that we must amend the, the, the act. We want the IPT, IPT head now so that he must be able to deal with those metropolis people who undermine the dignity of our people. And as the ANC, we cannot allow that. We have dealt with the police, the South Check African policemen order. who acted outside uh, the, the rules of the, 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 the I mean, the, the police. And you, you, the DA, you have been happy. And time and again, when the, the IP presents, you yeah, want right. to know about oh, the... Honorable Mapat. The, that thing. So, uh, uh, I want to conclude, uh, uh, Honorable Person, that uh, if the act is not clear on what the minister must do in the event that the time has lapsed, it's silent. So, I would propose that we can't wait for another one year without having the act and with a competent uh, lady who's going to lead this IP, uh, 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 the IP that I support that we move ahead, uh, we appoint the, the, the head. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, thank you, Honorable Mapatsu. I allowed you to complete, but there was a point of order from Honorable Whitfield. Honorable Whitfield, I'll take your point of order. Thank you, Chair. Chair, it's unfortunate that Honorable Members are now politicizing the issue when all other members have stuck to the facts of law and the advices that have been provided to the committee. The Western Cape is the only province with a police ombudsman. There are oversight bodies in place. And let me be very clear that land grabs are a problem in every province and they are being enforced in every province where law enforcement is removing people who are illegally occupying land. So I, I think that we are... Members, person, honorable members, I'm going to call you all to order. I indicated to you that the Western Cape will be called to the committee to answer for what happened. We, in the, the next meeting, will invite the Western Cape, the City of Cape Town Mayor, the MEC for safety to this committee meeting where this matter will be dealt with. Could I please request all members now to continue focusing on the appointment of the IPT. We stated that the act was silent on the matter of the Metro Police and the City Police as well as traffic officials. When we do amend the act, it will be a complete amendment and not just an amendment on the appointment of the executive director. So we have agreed, fundamentally we've agreed, that we require an overall amendment of the IPAD Act. Could I now receive an opinion from Advocate Jikela on um, the Helen Suzman um, letter and um, what they recommend we should do? Advocate Jikela? <clears throat> uh, 
Good morning, Chair and members of the committee. Chair, can I deal with this in this fashion? Where you are at the moment, Chair, you are dealing with this matter in terms of Section 6, 1 and 2 of the IPID Act. Uh, these sections say the minister must nominate a candidate to fill the position of the executive director. And that nomination by the minister must come to the committee for confirmation or rejection. And in law, this is a very simple and straightforward provision. What, sim what seems to complicate the decision that you have to make now is the fact that for the minister to nominate, there must have been a vacancy. And that vacancy, in terms of the law, should have been filled within a period of 12 months. Now, instead of the committee dealing with Section 6, 1 and 2, which deals with the nomination and confirmation, we have to deal with the issue of non-compliance with the provision that it must be done within 12 months. Now, as we said in our previous opinions, that the law as it stands is silent on what must happen should there be a non-compliance with that provision. But what we also suggested to the committee was that the fact that there may have been a non-compliance does not take the power to nominate and for the committee to appoint a way. How the committee deals with that non-compliance, in our view, is through the normal oversight processes. The minister must appear before the committee, and it seems he has done so, explain why he has not been able to do so within the prescribed period. And the committee must deliberate on that non-compliance. It must make its report available to the House, and the House makes a decision. That is the oversight process. But nowhere in our opinion do we suggest that the fact that there has been a non-compliance, it means the process cannot proceed. And I think we should, we, I should, we should make that clear. Chair, I want to now proceed to the issue of the Helen Sussman Foundation, and I want to take the committee back to how we got to this position. The term of Mr. McBride came to an end, was, sub, was scheduled to come to an end on the 28th of February. In, in January, if my memory served me well, he received a letter from the minister informing him that the minister has no intention of extending. Mr. McBride objected to that decision and wrote to parliament and wrote to the minister and said, the power to renew lies with the committee. And therefore, what when he went to the high court in Pretoria, he sought to enforce the provisions of Section 6 in as far as they relate to renewal. Before the matter could go for a hearing, all parties that were involved came to an agreement. I'm, by all parties now, I mean Mr. McBride, the minister, and the portfolio committee, came to a conclusion that, an agreement that, indeed, the matter has now been referred to the portfolio committee or to parliament for a decision. And that parliament must make its decision by the 22nd of February in 2019. Parliament committed itself to do that before that date, and it did exactly that. It made a decision about the renewal or non-renewal of the contract, and it decided not to renew. That was the basis of the settlement. What parliament did, was what was agreed by the parties before the court. And that agreement was made an order of court. Of course, Helen Susan Foundation had difficulty with that settlement. And they appealed that settlement order that was issued by the court. And they failed in the Pretoria High Court. And they have now taken that issue to the Supreme Court of Appeal. That is the matter that is pending before the Supreme Court of Appeal. 
But I want to emphasize again, and you will see in the draft reply that we had prepared for the for the committee in, in response to the Helen Suzman Foundation, we seek in that letter to draw a distinction between the issues that are a subject of the appeal before the SCA and the issue that the committee now is called upon to decide. What is before the SCA in our view is the issue of the non-renewal, whether parliament should have played any role in the re renewal or non-renewal of the ED's previous term. In our view, that decision was made subsequent to a court order, and that decision by parliament is not under review in the Supreme Court of Appeal. So there was a vacancy that occurred on the 28th of February, that's why there has been an acting ED for all this period. That's why there is a new nomination now, which must be confirmed by the Portfolio Committee of Parliament. So in our view, those are two separate matters. Whether Parliament should have been involved does not mean there is no vacancy because the vacancy occurred on the 28th of April, I mean of, of February. So these are the two things that we seek to separate that in as much as we are aware of what of the appeal that is pending. But that appeal is on a different matter. It, does, it has, is not on the power of the minister to nominate because that section is not being challenged. The power of parliament to confirm or not to confirm is not under consideration by the SCA. It is the interpretation by the Helen Suzman based on the previous judgments that is a subject of interpretation between um, between the Supreme Court of Appeal. What I must say, though, Chair, is that in law there is a principle that you can't read subsection 1 in isolation from subsection 3 and subsection 6. An entire provision must be read as in a manner that will give harmony to it. And I think that's the challenge we are facing with all of this. Although there is clear what the minister needs to do and what the portfolio committee must do, but that must be done in the context of a vacancy that has occurred and how that vacancy occurred. And I think now everything is being brought together to suggest that the committee should not do anything. And I think these are the issues that the committee must consider. And I'm deliberately limiting myself to the legal issues as they appear in section six. There are a lot of policy issues that have been raised, which I think those are matters that are perfectly within the domain of the committee to consider, but for, not for me as a legal advisor to pronounce on them. But where we are, section 6.1 and 6.2 says there must be a nomination and that nomination must be confirmed or rejected by the committee. And I think that's what is the issue. But unfortunately, you can't separate that from the vacancy that appeared, which was supposed to have been filled within a particular period. You can't separate that from the issue of non-renewal because now they all come together and they create the difficulties that you face. But in law, these are three separate processes that are provided for in different provisions of that clause. And Chair, I will leave it at that. That's why we provided you with what was a purely legal response to what Helen Sussman was, was saying, that these matters are separate. Parliament has a constitutional obligation and as a statutory obligation to fill this vacancy. And it has every intention of doing so. And that's the process it will undertake. That was a legal response. But it does not say there are policy considerations that the committee can sit and consider amongst itself and make a decision on those. And you have all the power to do that. You have the power to reject what has been put before you with your own reasons. But those are matters that legal advisors cannot pronounce on. Thank you very much, Chair. Well, members, we have had legal opinions. I sought legal advice on each and every matter as we have dealt with the appointment of the executive director. We have now heard from Advocate Jigella that we may, and I'm convinced that we may proceed, that we may either approve or reject the nomination from the minister. And unless otherwise, I'm convinced that the legal opinion allows us to do so. 
I've noted the hand of um, Honorable Faku. Um, and um, if you have any other hands, I haven't seen other hands on my screen, please indicate if you'd like to speak now. Um, I'll take Honorable Faku and then we will continue with um, the process of listening to the recruitment of the iPad. Honorable Faku, and then you can indicate on your screen if you'd like to speak. Um, Whitfield would like to speak again. Um, Honorable Whitfield, you also have to tell me how many times you want to speak because we have a number of members who'd like to speak. Honorable Faku, you, you have the floor. Thank you, Chairperson, and greetings to yourself and to honorable members, minister and deputy minister, and all guests present. Uh, thank you, Chair. I think it's important, Chair, that uh, um, we supported the, the nomination by the minister because as a committee, the minister has been honest and the deputy minister to come and present to us all the challenges they have to appoint the iPad head and I think um, legal now has really clarified us um, on the issue of non-compliance because the issue of non-compliance is a 12-month period which there's evidence that the minister has brought forward. And I think in his opening remarks, he was stating that there was a period that they shortlisted, but they did not find a suitable candidate. And again, they appointed an external consultant to appoint. Um, so... At least for non-compliance, there's an explanation, there's a paper train, and I think as a committee we've been consistent to say that, give us, show us if there's there's something that is happening in appointing the IPT, which I think he has done. So there's no way we cannot appoint it because now I'm really comfortable on the non-compliance part because although it's non-compliance, but as a committee we're aware, and then the minister now is nominating a, a, a person. This is brought to the committee, and I think it's important, Chair, what the challenges that IPED has. Uh, let us support the appointment of the iPad head. Uh, there's nothing wrong as a committee, because even the, the, the act is vague in other issues, so there's no gap, Chair. Let us appoint and support this. And I think, Chairperson, uh, we need not to delay this matter. We need to appoint what the challenge is, because... As Honorable Majorzis, Jackie has stated that we must not mix things. Even the Helen Sussman Foundation, it's about the amendment. That as a committee, we can consider at a later stage, but it must not delay the appointment of I Thanks, Chair. Uh, thank you, Honorable Members. Uh, I've noted Honorable Whitfield and then um, Honorable Mofoking, and then after that, we'll discuss whether we approve or reject the appointment of the IPT. Thank you very much, Honorable Whitfield, and then Honorable Mofoke. Sorry, Chair, Khrinabal uh, speaking here. I've, I've got my hand up. It's on the PJG. Okay, Honorable. I raised my hand long ago. Honorable Khrinabal, and Thank then Mofoke, Khrinabal, and Peacock. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Chairperson, I just want to draw the committee's attention back to the letter from the speaker. Um, and if you'll indulge me, I just want to read that again. The speaker's letter said the wording of the particular provision, which is 6.5 of the IPAD Act, is very specific and does not allow for any extension to be granted, even by Parliament. That the vacancy remains unfilled since becoming vacant in February 2019 is, on the face of it, a breach of the Act. Chairperson, the Minister is in breach of the Act and the Committee is not doing anything about it. The best way to hold the Minister accountable, which is the duty of this Committee, is to suspend this process, conclude the complete amendment of the Act, as you've so eloquently stated, which I fully support, uh, correct the inconsistencies, treat it as a priority, and then proceed with a nomination process to appoint a permanent head of IPID. I do not believe this will bring stability to IPID. It will remain a dark cloud of controversy hanging over our police watchdog, which is not going to help us to fulfill our oversight functions of the police in South Africa. Chairperson, we do not support, or I do not support, the nomination of uh, the minister. 
and I would encourage the committee to follow suit. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Honorable Whitfield. Uh, Honorable members, we have received uh, the legal opinion. We have had um, Advocate Jigela give us a thorough uh, briefing on the appointment. I do believe that we can continue. I'm listening to um, Honorable Mofoking Grunewald. I'll start with Mofoking and then Grunewald. Thank you, Chairperson. Thanks, uh, Chairperson. I will go straight to the last part of the letter from uh, the attorneys of Helen Susman. It says that uh, should the committee proceed to deliberate and reach a decision on the minister's nomination, the Helen Susman Foundation reserves its right in respect of the legal remedies which are available to it, including the right to take appropriate remedial action. Therefore, we have a right to continue to choose whoever we want, and they can take their action wherever they want. That is what we should do. Because, Chair, I can tell you now, the members of the DA or the members that are against this appointment, they were not honest with us in the committee when now and then we were saying to the minister, you need to appoint the head of IP with the challenges that we are having. It seems as if this members that are actually against this appointment, they are happy to see all the things that are happening in the IP. They will tell us about uh, the Cape Town, Western Cape. Western Cape is not better. It's not better and it's also having challenges unless they don't want the IP to be zooming into whatever is happening in Western Cape. And for Honorable Whitfield, we are not politicizing this. They are politicizing this before. Every now and then they will tell us about the Helen Sussman and then also the Corruption Watch. Are they spokesperson for these people? Honorable members, we are not going to be fooled. We need a person to be in charge. And this time it's a woman and will lead us. I support. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Honorable Mofoking. Honorable Grunewald and then Peacock and then Sheikh Iman. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Chair. Chair, in law, they always refer to two situations. They talk about the de jure situation and the de facto situation. Now, it means actually what is the technical issue and what is the practical situation, what happens in practice. Now, firstly, I want to say that I think the legal opinion on the Alan Sussman Foundation is correct. I have my doubts whether they will succeed, but it's not for me to make that decision. The fact of the matter is, Chair, that the de jure situation we are confronted with is that there was a breach of an act. Now, the question is, what are we going to do in practice? Firstly, I want to say that, and it was mentioned by the legal advisor that this committee should take a decision which I will support and which I will propose that we get a comprehensive report from the Honorable Minister for the reasons why we had this delay and why there was a breach of the Act. Chairperson, we as Portfolio Committee of Police have an obligation uh, of oversight. And if we do not receive such comprehensive report, then we are actually failing the people of South Africa and we are failing to ensure that we do our work so that we should do. I said it when I spoke the first time that yes, we can still continue amending the Act because I think there are certain problems there. And I will also support that we start on the process of amending the IPED Act again, a further amendment. That doesn't mean that we cannot appoint a, a new executive director. Setting, I've said that, Chairperson, I also want to say that I will not support this nomination 
because I am of the opinion that the portfolio committee should determine its own criteria. And I mean, I didn't even see the person. One criteria, for instance, for the committee should have been that the person appears in front of the committee where we can question the candidates. And a good example is, for instance, if people are nominated for the uh, board for the SABC, uh, then they are interviewed by the portfolio committee in parliament. And we should have a similar process in the portfolio committee of police. My last point, Chairperson, we must ask ourselves, why did we have the previous court cases? Why did the court instructed parliament to amend the IPED Act? It is because that they feel and the court confirmed that there should be proper oversight from parliament in the appointment of the director, the executive director. And the reason is that there should not be politically manipulation from the Honorable Minister on the executive. That is why we had the situation. And I am of the opinion, Chairperson, yes, and they are coming back to the de jure and the de facto. De jure, technically, yes, the committee is now going to take a decision. We know that the ANC has got the majority, and it's going to be a political decision, not a merit decision. And I have really a problem with that, Chair, that we did not have a proper process for the criteria and the application, therefore, on the specific candidate. And on those uh, matters, uh, Chairperson, I will also not support the nomination of this uh, specific candidate. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Members. If I could give direction in this meeting. One, we are all in agreement that the IPAD Act needs to be completely and fully amended. So could we all agree that we, the committee is in agreement, there's an unanimous agreement that the IPAD Act should be amended. Two, we've also understood and clearly uh, accepted that we, the committee needs a comprehensive report on why and uh, on why we have had the delay. The Honourable mem uh, Members and Honourable Minister, we expect a comprehensive report for the reasons for the delay to be given to us in our next meeting. So that we have a clear understanding why there was a breach of the Act. That's the second matter. Third matter is we are in agreement that the appointment or the rejection of the IPAD can be discussed. All honourable members, if we continue the next, I'm going to rule you out of order if you do not discuss this. We are now discussing whether we approve or reject the current proposed nomination by the minister. Honourable members, if we do discuss criteria after there has already been a nomination, we need to ask ourselves if this would be fair upon the existing process. There has been an existing process. We cannot reverse that process. Could I please understand if we adopt new criteria, how that would affect the current candidates which have been proposed. Um, Honorable Peacock, could you please um, specify and, and focus now on whether we approve or reject the proposed nominee? I thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, greetings to all me to the minister as well as the deputy minister and, and the members of the portfolio committee. Mine to you is that we support the appointment or we support their we support the appointment of the IPD head 
And Chairperson, one thing that really worries me is that why is there so many fault findings now since we have to finalize what the very same Honorable Khurnevald and Wetfield have been complaining about that the position is not being filled. Now today we are playing the role that we are expected to do and to appoint. Now there are fa fa fault findings with regard to the minister. And as I as in when I remember, the minister have always been honest with us, explaining to us even processes, why couldn't they be able to appoint? So even the report that is needed, it's just to find fault, Chairperson. What we need to do is a, a something and the decision that we have to take as members of the portfolio committee is to agree with regard to the recommendation made by the minister. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Sheikh Imam. Thank you, Honorable uh, Chairperson. Chair, you know, I, I think earlier on I, I, I gave you a, a, a brief so not on my views in terms of this, so I don't really want to go into that. I'm quite satisfied that we do have the authority to be able to, to, to make the appointment once the, the minister to appoint and for us to finalize that. So I'm quite satisfied in terms of that is concerned. Uh, there's no way does it say we do not have the power to do that way, you know. So, looking at the candidate before us, Chair, I've gone through the entire CV and, uh, and I've looked into it. I've done some research into it. Uh, I've done some Googling and I've done a whole lot of things. And I see that the candidate before us, first of all, has the necessary qualification. She has the ne necessary experience. She started with humble beginnings. She grew into the South African police services. She uh, acquired an extensive knowledge uh, 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 and she's been able to manage and one of the things that we always have a problem with and that is budgeting and financial challenges when we have heads of department and again this candidate in my view has even got experience in terms of that she's been managing and budgeting and doing everything else in terms of that uh, she's she, she has also been in conflict resolution, which you know quite often we get that with police officers complaining about others for other reasons and whatever it is. So, you know, I'm quite satisfied that the candidate before us has the necessary qualification, the expertise, and the experience to be able to fill this position. Very importantly, we do not have a head, and we know the consequences of that. We know what is happening with IFED as a result of not having a head. For a long period of time, we have been shouting and screaming about IPAD not having a head. And I don't think it's going to prejudice anybody if we appoint a, 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 a this particular candidate right now and then amend the act accordingly. And then, of course, we follow new and new processes once the amendment is act. So from the National Freedom Party point of view, Chair, we are quite satisfied and I'm, uh, as a member of this portfolio committee that the minister, as with current re regulation, has the power to, 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 to nominate and, and appoint for us to, 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 to actually uh, uh, verify it and be satisfied. And we can either support it or reject it. And from my point of view, I'll be supporting this uh, nomination uh, uh, to appoint uh, um, this candidate, Jennifer Dikaledi Slatseng, if that's the pronunciation correct, to be the iPad head. And then we'll deal with other issues later. Thank you very much, Jen. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, do I have a further hands? The proposal is that Ms. Jennifer Latsen be appointed as the IPAD head. Yes, no. ma'am. No. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Honorable Mapato. Yes. No. No, Chairperson. Um, uh, honourable members, could I take your your uh, names? I'll start with Honourable Third Blanche. My password, please. Um, I'm taking the Honourable. Chairperson, no, I I don't I don't support the I don't support that. The candidate I, has got no experience regarding investigations. And that is the most important part of IPAD's job, so I don't support it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Honorable Whitfield has already indicated he is not in support. Honorable Kurunewald has indicated he is not in support. Honorable Mapatsu. 
Honorable Mapache. Uh, th 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 thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, Chair, you know, uh, we sometimes take a, a situation where we undermine the quality of women that we have in our country. And if people do not have confidence in a woman who have spent time studying and working on some of these things, and we come to the committee and say, we don't want uh, this woman. What kind of a, a country are we? So we as the ANC, we support the emancipation of women and the empowerment of women because they are the same like us. And if they have the qualifications, they meet the requirements. We must support them. But I'm, I'm, I'm really uh, uh, surprised, Chairs, that we are requesting a report. And it is written down that we are the same committee that have been pushing the minister that he, he must come uh, with an appointment. I remember the last meeting, it was the deputy minister present. We even said, look, uh, three months at least, the minister, uh, bring the, the candidate. All of us, we are great. We never raised the Helen Sue's men. We never raised uh, anything. Now that the candidate uh, is here, the ministers brought the candidate for adoption. We are saying we are politicizing. We will okay. politicize the things if they politicize them. Thank you. I support the candidate. On Honorable Chair, uh, Chair, point of order. Person, point of order. About, please. Chairperson, it is not acceptable that the Honourable Member now come forward and say that people objecting to the nomination that we are against women. The gender, from my point of view, has got nothing to do with the matter. I objectively said to the committee what my opinion is, and I do object for the Honourable Kapatshi to come and say that we have problems because it's women. Uh, it's totally unacceptable and he should withdraw that. Thank you. Honorable Mapatsu, can you withdraw, please? Chair, maybe I did not understood uh, uh, Honorable Tare Blanche. What was, uh, what did he say? I was referring to Honorable Tara Blanche, not to Honorable Grunewald. So I think Honorable Tara Blanche did mention something like that. Uh, 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 honorable, honorable members, could I have order in my meeting, please? Honorable Tara Blanche said she does not have investigatorial experience. Exactly. Thank you. She did not say that she should not be appointed because she is a woman. This committee has, in the, as we have expressed ourselves on the matter of gender equity and our appreciation for the fact that there should be gender representation in the police. So could I rule you all out of order and could we not continue? We are discussing the candidate whether we approve the candidate or not. As for now, we have most of the members approving the candidate. I'll hand over to Honorable Mofo King, please. Chairperson, thank you very much. I said it before that uh, um, for the candidate, that is Jennifer Dikeledi Nkase, uh, to be the I uh, executive director for IPIT. And I'm saying that uh, we are appointing somebody with qualifications that are correct and also a person who's got experience. And I hope that we are going to give her support. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Mofo King. Do we have any other um, members who'd like to contribute? Just uh, Honorable um, Peacock? Chairman, uh, you also. Chair. Chairperson, 
Tini and then Majosi. Peacock? Chairperson, I'm in support of, of, of the name of Jennifer Dikeledi Ntateng as proposed by the minister or by the minister as well as the committee that actually was responsible with the task that they did and we appreciate even the task that they took. And Chairperson, this notion I'm going to, I'm, I'm really going to emphasize on it. This notion that it should be condemned when a woman should always be appointed in a such senior position, there's always the issue of experience relating to whatever as now it's now an issue of uh, investigative report. Tell me who is everyone that is born with experience. So we support that and we know that she'll do her best in the position. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Shembeni, and then Majosi, and then we're concluding. Chair, note me. Faku. I note. hope you did not forget Shembeni. Shembeni. Honorable Shembeni, you're next. Honorable Shembeni, you're next. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, as I've said, uh, I'm not against the appointment of the uh, IP executive. The only thing that I'm totally against is uh, the politicizing of this thing. Uh, we must always make sure that we don't politicize uh, the appointment of the IP executive so as to make it function the way we want it to function. The appointment of a woman is very much important. We applaud that, it's, very, uh, it's a very good thing. But let politics not be involved in this thing. This is not that this is ANC man, what, 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 no. We must appoint a person who's qualified to do the job for this nation. So the issue of politics around this I think it must come to an end. We must appoint, and then the committee, I want to see the involvement of the committee when the appointments or the interviews are being done, so that we must not receive uh, 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 nominations when they are done, so that we are presented by a person that this is the person. I think that if the committee becomes part of this interview, even if we sit and look at what is happening, I think that can help us. Because now a person is being presented to us. It's a qualified person, yes. But uh, politics, I, I don't see them. the politics helping us in this thing. Politics must stay away from appointing uh, executives, especially of IP. We don't want a certain political party to take part in appointing so as to make cover-ups. Because if we allow politics to be involved in this thing. It means now the IP also will be under siege. It will be controlled by somebody of which that's not what we want. Thank you. Honorable members, we already- Honorable made... Chair, Honorable Chair, I'm point of order. Three. I've listened to all the points of order. I'll listen to you now. Uh, and thank you, Chairperson, I'm done. I hope you, you, you can hear me. Yes, we've heard you. Honorable members, we agreed that there is no way in which we can politicize the appointment of the IPAD head. This position is too important for us to have a cloud hanging over the appointee. When this person is appointed, it will be an appointment, an appointee of the committee. Whether certain members agreed or, or disagreed, the final decision will be taken by the committee. We have agreed as well that you focus, you do, Honorable Shinbeni, that we do not politicize the matter and that you focus on the candidate. Yes, when we amend the act, we have to look at the process of appointment and the committee becomes part of the interview panel or that the candidate be interviewed by the committee. The current act does not allow for this or does not expect us to do so. So I'm going to allow a point of order with Honorable Groenewald and then Honorable Faku, you'll be the last speaker. Honorable Groenewald. 
Thank you, Chairperson, bearing with me. I think it is important to be noted on this time uh, on what the Honorable Peacock has said on the investigative uh, abilities. Uh, I think it is important that we put on record that six potential candidates were rejected solely on one aspect, and that was that they had no investigative experience. And those were the reasons for non-recommendation. So six of them, good candidates with good qualifications, and now we appoint someone who also does not have investigative experience. I think we must just put that on, uh, on record. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Honorable Grunewald. We have made that comment. Um, Honorable Faku, and then we'll conclude. Thank you, Chairperson. I think, Chairperson, it is important that uh, we move and 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 approve the iPad head because I think now honourable members are coming up with all sort of issues. Now we are questioning the process, which we suppose not to question the process at this time. The advert was out, and we believe that the panel that was appointed had a suitable um, information of what is required, and what what minister has presented to us. It qualifies the appointment of the iPad head. First, we were complaining about the process and legal came and legal explained. Now, Honorable Terry Blanche and Grunewald, they're talking about other issues, which I think at this point, those issues are not relevant. I think it's important, Chair, that as a committee, whatever we discuss, we are consistent. And I fully agree with you when you say that we must not politicize, politicize issues. I think with what is presented before us as a committee, um, all the necessary steps have been captured. Let us approve the iPad head. Let the uh, Helen Sussman Foundation go ahead with the process it's, go, it's doing. They are, it's, in within, it's within their own right. As a committee, we're exercising our right as prescribed by the Act. So I think also the issue of non-compliance, we have taken it into consideration. But if there are mitigating factors, which the minister has come to the committee and explained those factors, why was the why was the iPad head not appointed within the 12 months? So I propose, Chair, that we close this manner, you know, this meeting, because majority of us agree on the approach, and other issues will deal them with them at a later stage. And we want to appreciate the minister for actually looking into women we know that in our country sometimes women are taken aside men especially in the sector in the security sector most of the time men are more uh, better than women so we appreciate that as a committee but what is important is that she qualifies she has the experience and everything that entails it's not just because she's a woman thanks chair We have reached, I think we have reached this conclusion. I've allowed all members a very good opportunity to speak. I did not limit you to time. I did not limit you to a particular perspective. And I do think that we have come to the conclusion and that we strongly support the candidate which has been proposed by the minister. The committee therefore accepts that Ms. Jennifer Dikaledi Glasen be appointed as the Executive Director of IPED. We are convinced that this was a robust process and that we have ensured that we've appointed an individual which has the necessary qualifications for this position. I would like to accept that the candidate demonstrates an in-depth knowledge of the criminal justice system based on the, the documents which I've read. We can th thus also say that the, the candidate that we are supporting was interviewed. The panel um, nominated her as the best candidate. They nominated her as the candidate who understood the work of IPED. We'd like to support that. Uh, honorable members, I think we've had a vigorous discussion on our oversight role. It is incumbent on us as a committee 
to ensure that the IFAC Act is amended. We have looked at the profiles of the candidates who have been who have been interviewed. The process has been transparent. I'm happy that we have had all legal opinions and that we have had such a vigorous process. I would have been extremely disappointed if the committee simply rubber stamped the nominee from the minister. Honorable members, there has been in no way have we simply rubber stamped the, the candidate or the nominee. We have really gone through a thorough process and I'm happy that we have spent so much time on looking at the legal opinions, looking at the processes. Yes, the processes will be flawed, but in the amendment of the Act, we'll ensure that these processes are tightened up. Honourable Minister, uh, we do not need to give you a, a further opportunity to speak unless you feel that it is totally necessary. The committee has the final say in this matter. Um, so as the final arbiter in this matter, the committee approves the candidate as nominated by the minister. Thank you very much, Honourable Minister. Thank you very much, Honourable yeah. Deputy Minister. Chairperson, just one thing. I have received the report on the security, uh, which is initial, that said no illicit activity identified under the name of the candidate. So, but the vetting uh, will come, but this is this is what we have just received as we are seated here. Thank you very much. Um, Honourable Minister, that is a very important uh, uh, um, addition. That was, in fact, what I was going to conclude to say that the process of vetting should be concluded. We want the, the, to know that the uh, candidate has no um, skeletons in the closet that we will discover later and that um, she has passed the vetting process. We then would like a thorough report on that when you do um, re once the vetting has been concluded. Honourable members, that concludes the business on the appointment of the IPAD head. The committee has approved that Ms. Jennifer Dicoledi Glassing be appointed as the executive director of IPAD. Honourable Minister, you may be excused. We will continue now um, addressing the adoption of the reports of the adjustment budgets. Thank if you I'm very much. Sir. You may be excused. Thank you. Congratulations, Minister. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much, Chair. Chair President, the Minister must uh, practice now to say in class A. What did I say? I'll tell you next time, but in <laughs> class A. Please okay. practice in class A. In class A. Okay. All right. <laughs> That will be practice. Anyway, we're working, and uh, I'll be mentioning the name every day, so I'll have to perfect myself on it. Thanks. Sure. Thank you. Thanks to other members. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, thank you, Deputy Minister. Um, honorable members, that does not conclude the business of today. We'll now continue with the reports, the recommendations of the reports. Um, I'll take the SAPS report. The administration, could you please display the SAPS report on our screens? The consideration of the adoption of the committee reports. I'll start with the, the SAPS report. Dr. Kinnis, do you have the SAPS report, please? Yes, Chair, I'm just trying to find the, the report. I think that, that no, that's the wrong report. Let me yes. just find the correct one. Right. Sorry, Chair. Um, let's see if this is it. Yeah, I hope uh, members can see the report, Chair. Yes. This, this is the SAPS report. Yes. Um, the correct report, you may start. Okay, Could you scroll page one? Honourable members, the draft report, Portfolio Committee on Police, on the adjusted budget for the South African Police Services, it's presented to you 
the draft report is presented to you. Page one, do you have any comments that you wish to make? Amendments? Honourable members? Page two, honourable members, are you still there? Yes, Chairperson, we are here. Two, Dr. Kinnis, could you go to page two, please? Dr. Kinnis, your uh, screen is frozen. Uh, Chair, I think Babalwa has um, access to the screen, so she, she just have to move it down. Thanks. Babalwa? Chair, I think all of us have got documents with us here. Yeah. We have not. Hello, Chair. Um, honourable members, the, the the meeting is 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 the live meeting, so we have to do that for the sake of the public. Chair, can I ask Dr. Kinas to remove the report on the screen? Dr. Kinas, could you and Babawa please take this out while we are waiting? It's Sab's report, Chair. Can 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 he remove it from on the screen? Can he remove it on the screen, Chair? Is that better, Chair? Yes. About place you already. Chair. Yes. Fourteen yes. grad. Okay. About what we waiting for you? <clears throat> Honourable members, we have to do this for the sake of the public. This is the live recording. Are you ready now? Yes, Chair. I'm ready. Yes, Chair. Both of you, could we continue? We have approved this. Honorable members, we do not we do not seem to have any such there we go. All right. Any amendments, comments? Next. Any amendments or comments? Page two. Next. Corrections. Page three. Any correction? Page four. Next. Corrections. Page five. Amendments. Next page. That's page six. Program four intelligence. We said should get an additional amount in future. Program five. Chairperson. Yes. Chair, um, I, I think I did communicate with um, with uh, Dr. Kinnis. Um, in the Paragraph under costs of personal protection equipment. The last sentence says the committee in raising this matter was concerned that corrupt practices were not present in the supply of such PPE. Um, I, I don't fully understand why we would uh, would say that corrupt practices were not present. Um, perhaps that was a mistake, or perhaps I've mis misread it. If we could just get an explanation and perhaps a correction. Uh, if I may, Chair, yes, uh, we've um, uh, noted that from uh, Mr. Whitfield and his subsequent uh, amendment. We will include that in the report. Uh, that was an error uh, on our part, Chair, so we accept that. Thank you. Could you correct that, please? Sorry, sorry, Chair. Yes. Chair, we yes. also asked them to give us an undertaking. We also asked them to give us an undertaking that they were going to send us this comprehensive report uh, on that PPEs and things, Chair. Agreed. Uh, could we please ensure that that report is given to us? Dr. Kinnis, could you ensure that I write a letter to, um, to SAPS? Chairperson, we, if you look uh, uh, on page 11, um, the first... Page 11? 
and make it available to the committee. Let me read it that, Chair. On page 11, yes. uh, the first recommendation is that the committee recommends the SAPs provide you, a, a breakdown of personal protection equipment. So we, we have put it into the report. Thanks, Chair. All right. Point one. The committee recommends that SAPS provides a breakdown of personal protection equipment. Two, the committee recommends that SAPS provide an alternative plan for the building of police stations. Three, that SAPS revises all its targets for gender-based violence and increases it to reflect the priority in line with the president's priorities. Four, provides details how to how the processing time for new firearm applications can change from 90 to 120 days. Committee recommends that SAPS provides a plan to ensure that detective services program achieves its targets despite the shortfall, that SAPS finalizes an MOU with CETA, and seven, finally, that SAPS monitors the health of SAPS members with a view to reducing the spread of COVID-19. The Portfolio Committee on Police, having considered the adjusted budget, recommends approval. The report is considered. Do I have a proposal for adoption? Uh, Chair, before the proposal, can we go to page nine, please? Page nine. Could I go back to page nine, please? Page nine. That's page nine. I think yes. the top bit is on crime intelligence. Yes. Could we have? Page nine uh, um, on crime intelligence. Yes, uh, I think that it, it starts with crime intelligence. Uh, I don't see the top of it. Could you scroll down, please. I'll scroll down a little bit. Scroll up. Okay, it's okay. It says that uh, the committee noted that the crime intelligence was not cut. I think it should be the crime intelligence budget. You can't you know, say just start with the crime intelligence was not cut. The crime intelligence budget. That's where thank I think you. the situation should be. But in that, uh, yeah, thank you very much. And uh, I move for the adoption of the report with amendments. The report, there's a proposal for the adoption of the report with amendments. Do I have a second? Yeah. Yes, Chair. Thank you, Mom. Seconds. Thank you. Yeah. Can I get the report, please? Chair. Sure. I have a hand. I don't see a hand in the. Uh, um, please, could you indicate if there's another person who'd like to speak? Yes, Whitfield, Chair. Whitfield? Just to say the DA reserves its rights on the report before it's tabled in the House. Thank you. You may. Thank you very much. Um, Honourable members will do the civilian secretary. Dr. Kinis and Babawa, are you ready? Yeah, I think Babawa was just trying to find the, the report, but um, I'll see if I can share it. Thank you. The civilian secretariat report is before you, page one. Page one, could you go to page two? Thank you. Page three. Honorable members, do you have any concerns? Page four. Chair, you can see it. We can see it. I can see it where I am. Dr. Kinis and Babawa, you are really disorganizing us today. No, but I can see it. Honorable Mofoking, the other members are able to see it. 
It's okay, Chair. I will have to go to Travel. my document. It's okay. I can. See. Oh, it's, it was it was there, and now it actually was removed again. Right. Page five. Next. Page six. Any comments? Corrections. Page six. The recommendations are put to the house. Recommendations. Do you accept the recommendations? Honourable members, the report is put to the committee, the portfolio committee. Um, as we consider vote 21, the civilian secretariat for police services, the report is considered. Do I yes. have a proposal for adoption? I propose, Chair, for adoption. Fact. A proposal. I, se I second, Chair. Seconded by, by Peacock. Dr. Kinnis, could we then go to the budget on Alfred? Uh, Paul, we'll, we'll set up the iPad report, Chair. Thanks. Investigative Directorate is placed before you. For members, for the police, your mic is Could you please switch off your mics? Page one. Do you have any comments, corrections? Page two. Do you have any corrections? Page three. Page four. The responses, page five. The recommendations, next. Do we have any corrections here? None, if none, could we have the next page, please? Chairperson, on recommendations. Yes. I think we, we said that, uh, I think it was uh, noted before, on the committee question, the IPIT about its spending on PPEs, and especially hand sanitizers and whatever, the recommendation was that they should come and present to us the detailed report on that. Agreed. Chair is noted, we will uh, capture it like that. Thank you very much. Captured. The report is placed before the committee with, uh, with amendments. Do I have a proposal for adoption? Chairperson, yes. Chairperson, I just want to place it on record that during the presentation, I was unable to participate and I did report it to the chairperson back then um, due to a terrible noise. I couldn't follow anything, so I wasn't part of this. So uh, I just want to put that on record, Chairperson. Would that please be recorded? Would it also we be will do so, Chair. Chairperson had to leave the meeting and that Mapatsu chaired the meeting. Chairperson, I move for the adoption of the report with amendments. But for ad adoption with amendments, more for okay. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Mom. Thank you. Thank you, Mom. Thank you. I second the adoption of the uh, report. I Thank you. Thank you, honorable members. That brings us to the end of the business of today. Congratulations to the appointment of the IPT and uh, congratulations for the adoption of our reports. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Chairperson. The meeting is now adjourned. Thank you, Mapatswe. Thank you very much. Thank you, Majosi. Thank you. Majosi. She has, she has left Majosi.
Mkai. Ye mkai. Ye mkai. Kunjani. Nyapila. Ya mngatu petu e flu mkai. Eish. Mketu e flu vele mkai. E paso penu no shembeni la pa. Ne paso pena. I'm safe. I'm safe. Yes. Hey. Like Josie, how are you? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to be a good
Good morning, Chair. Good afternoon, Chair.